caught on camera. Yeah, it was frantic, you know? It was really, it was, it was hectic. There, there was people yelling, screaming everywhere. Tense moments as Irving firefighters rushed to save a little girl's life and see how first responders returned months later to celebrate her recovery. Golf club success. We get a lot of compliments about the shape of the greens and condition of the course. We are visiting the newly renovated Irving Golf Club and finding out what is making it popular with athletes. Plus, how Irving is responding to the West Nile virus. Progress at the Levy Event Plaza. And the cool way to celebrate Parks and Rec Month, now on City Source. Hello and welcome to City Source. I'm Kathy Whiteman. Our top story today is once again COVID-19. Case numbers and hospitalizations continue to rise and of the cases requiring hospitalization to date, more than two thirds have been under 65 years of age. The statewide face covering order continues and the public is strongly encouraged to observe all health protocols. Irving City Hall access remains by appointment only, and appointments are also required at Irving Recreation Centers. Irving Public Library offers curbside or drive-through service only at this time. With all of the focus on COVID-19, it's important to remember that West Nile virus can also be a concern at this time of year. Andrew Renfro is the city's vector control coordinator, and he joins us now. Thank you so much, Andrew, for being here. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. So let's start with one question we're hearing a lot. Can mosquitoes transmit COVID-19? No, there's a lot of uh, internal processes inside a mosquito that have to happen for them to be able to transmit a disease. COVID cannot be carried by the mosquitoes uh, of any kind. If you go to the CDC website under frequently asked questions, this question does appear and does have that same response. That's uh, very good news for all of us, I'm sure, but that means that the issue, of course, is West Nile virus. So what happens when the city or county detects an infected mosquito? So uh, the city has 19 traps placed every week across the entire city of Irving. Whenever we get our positive responses as uh, given to us by the testing labs done in uh, Dallas County, um, those come back to us and once we have positive, we go after 9 p.m. The city goes out, takes a truck, hits all of the areas that night within a 48 hour period of getting those positive test results. And then we retrap that area and make sure that those come back negative for West Nile. Okay, so uh, I'm sure you get questions about the spray. Is there any concern for people or for pets? Uh, no, actually, so the EPA regulations do not allow chemicals to be made that will really cause a lot of harm. That's never going to be a concern with spraying unless you go directly from the nozzle that we're spraying and, and breathe really, really hard while the spray is coming out. Truly, these, these chemicals are not harmful for the environment, for people, or for animals. Now, that doesn't mean we ask that you go stand outside when we spray. We really would like you to be inside to minimize any potential risks or any other factors that may be involved. But no, if you follow standard procedures, you, th these chemicals are not going to be harmful that we're spraying at all. So along with the action that the city takes, like the spraying and, and continual testing, what are some things that viewers can do at home? So there are processes that we call the four D's. We've been preaching these in the program for a very long time as I've looked at the history of the program. Dawn and dusk are the most active times for mosquitoes. There are midday mosquitoes, but they are few and far in between. DEET is a chemical additive that you want to look for in mosquito sprays uh, that will uh, uh, keep mosquitoes off you as, as a repellent. Drain all of your water. That is another thing that will really help get rid of any type of uh, mosquito larvae from forming. And then also uh, your clothes, your dress. I know uh, Texas heat, it can be extremely hot and extremely daunting to want to wear long clothes and pants. But uh, if you're going to be working in those times and uh, have a fear of being around mosquitoes, uh, long pants, long shirts. Okay, and I have to ask you this question. Uh, does the color of that clothing that you're wearing make a difference to a mosquito? It does. So uh, dark clothing is uh, tends to be uh, more preferred by mosquitoes. Dark clothing absorbs more heat, which is what they're looking for. That's what they sense for to find a food source. So bright clothing can reflect heat more easily. That is 
fascinating, and I had no <laughs> idea. I'm so glad I asked you that question. I, I, I want to follow up, too, on the, the drained the part of the, the four Ds. Uh, stagnant water, tell me about what that problem is, and should people be concerned about their pools if they have an outdoor pool? You don't have to be concerned about your pools as long as you have an active filtration. So just because the water isn't clear doesn't mean it's stagnant. Just because there's algae doesn't mean it's stagnant. Just because it's not moving doesn't mean that it's stagnant. Stagnant water is what happens when uh, grass, other organic materials break down in the water and they create food for the larvae to eat. And that's what creates stagnant water. It's decay. And it's a lot of a lot of stink. You will smell stagnant water. It has a specific odor. It's very strong. It's very unpleasant. Um, but if if you have a swimming pool and you have an active filtration, which by code of uh, City of Irving you're supposed to anyways, um, as long as that pump is going, as long as there's filtering, uh, it's going to be absolutely fine. You shouldn't worry about stagnant water unless you are perpetuating. You know, if you've got leaves falling in your pool and you have no pump, that's going to create uh, a buildup, but it takes a while. Um, and the city is doing everything we can, uh, myself especially, we work on stagnant water and getting that taken care of to prevent those uh, mosquito breeding sites. Excellent. This is great information, Andrew. Thank you for it. The city has a mosquito hotline and we'll put that number on the screen. When should someone mm -hmm. call that number? Someone should call that number anytime they have a question about mosquitoes. That can be easily answered. We'll call back as soon as possible. Um, someone should call when there is a, a stagnant water concern at their neighbors or in their front yard. If they have tested positive from a doctor, Dallas County is supposed to notify us anyway. But if they want to be proactive and send us, you know, documented proof from a licensed medical professional that they have West Nile virus, that's when they should call Unfortunately, Texas just is a state where there are high mosquito population numbers. There is a threshold for which that, you know, will go out and determine, OK, we'll need to spray. But a lot of the time we try to go for the larvicide approach, which isn't chemical based. It tends to be more natural um, and that tends to work. The preventative measures. Um, someone should call if they just if they want uh, mosquito dunk products for their own purposes, you know. Um, if they're worried about standing water in their yard, we do have free larvicides that uh, the public can use that are safe to use and be held and are not uh, dangerous to the environment or pets or any other types of animals. And we do have mosquito repellent. So if they're worried about that and they just have any questions about mosquitoes, give us a call. We're happy to we're happy to answer. That's great that we're seeing so many ways to be proactive uh, from the you know, from the viewer level, but, but very much from the city's response. Uh, before I let you go, can you talk us a little bit about how many traps there are and what's done with the samples? Yes, yeah. There are 57 trap locations across the city. We trap 19 at a time, so we're on a tri-weekly schedule where we'll hit every area. When those samples get to us, our wonderful technician takes them over to the Dallas County Mosquito Prevention Center, where they are identified and sent off to a Dallas County laboratory, tested for West Nile, and then those results are given back to us. And from there, we evaluate the population numbers per trap area. We evaluate whether or not West Nile is prevalent in that trap area, and then we determine what kind of action needs to be taken, whether it's preventative larvicides or if uh, there is positive West Nile or if there is uh, extremely high burst in population numbers to the thousands of, of a trap, that's when we'll go and conduct spraying with prior notification given to uh, Irving residents. It's very good to hear. Andrew, thank you so much for the information that you've shared with us today and we appreciate your time today. Thank you very much for having me. I'm glad to give it. Thank you. Find spraying schedules and more prevention tips at irvingfightsthebite.org. One place you will likely want to have mosquito repellent handy is the Irving Golf Club. The city recently invested millions to upgrade the course and clubhouse. Golf is a sport that naturally allows for social distancing, and that may be one reason it is proving to be especially popular during this pandemic. Brett Wheeler visited the Irving Golf Club to learn more about the increase in business. At the Irving Golf Club, there's a familiar sound filling the air. 
a sound that is music to the ears for Irving Golf Club General Manager Eric Wolford. Oh, it's been fantastic, uh, hitting record days as far as the amount of business and everything that we're doing. It's, it seems to be really exciting for Irving. And the newfound popularity isn't just exciting for Irving, but also exciting for the many golfers who have made their way out to the Irving Golf Club since its reopening. This is nostalgic for me because this is my first course I got to play in Dallas with the skyline on the horizon there it always caught my attention. I just I just enjoy the course and I love the renovation. It's in my rotation of courses to play in DFW. Tip of the cap to the grounds crew. They've done a great job from what this place used to be. Now um, I really enjoy it. The grass is lush, the greens are fantastic, and they've really done a nice job. We get a lot of compliments about the shape of the greens and uh, condition of the course. And while the condition of the course is on top of mind for many golfers, the condition of the worldwide pandemic is on top of mind for those who work here at the Irving Golf Club. They say that the safety of their guests is top priority, and they aim to make sure that the only thing that guests have to worry about is their backswing. We have made it to where a lot of cleaning has been going on. The one good thing that we've got is the facility being so brand new, it was easy to keep it clean. A lot of sanitizing and cleaning of the carts have gone on. Every time somebody gets in it, it's been re-cleaned from head to toe, even down to the range balls. Uh, they not only get clean, but they get sanitized uh, when they go through the cleaning process. Rob Kowalski comes out to the Irving Golf Club with his 12-year-old son Dylan about twice a week and says that golf is a sport that can easily be played while physically distancing yourself from others. But in addition to that, he has also noticed all of the procedures that the golf club has put in place to keep everyone safe. They've done a great job. Um, they're cleaning the carts having to wear masks to go inside and pay and get snacks at the turn, um, making sure we don't touch the flags. I, I feel very safe. Uh, if I didn't, I certainly wouldn't be out here with my 12 year old. So I, I feel very confident that they're doing a good job. The compliments, the, the feedback that we get is that we're doing everything that they expect us to do and they're happy with that. General Manager Eric Wolford says that the care that he and his staff have put into keeping everyone safe while hitting the green is just par for the course here at the Irving Golf Club. And while this pandemic is still at play, golfers can have peace of mind that this sport is in full swing. Brett Wheeler for City Source. Tee times are available online at irvinggolfclub.org or call 972-457-0772. In Las Colinas, the Levy Event Plaza is just about complete. The plaza along Lake Carolyn will be the place for special events such as the Independence Day fireworks, Taste of Irving, and other big celebrations. There will be permanent concrete space for stage setup, along with sites for vendor tents and food trucks. And even though there are not any special events going on right now, there will still be ways for residents to enjoy the plaza. Well, you know, I think it's going to be a great leisure spot, you know, for residents just to go out there and relax and enjoy the lake. Um, we're also going to be looking at bringing in some type of um, programming out there, maybe some yoga classes, some Pilates classes, some really nice relaxation things out there to provide a, a program offering for the residents out there and right by that beautiful lake setting. The design is intended to complement another popular feature in that area, the Lake Carolyn Promenade. Now to a story that features some compelling police body cam video of harrowing moments, along with some sights that will put a smile on your face. Along the way, there are also lessons to learn about household safety. Susan Stevens shows how Irving's first responders celebrated a little girl's recovery from a terrible injury. March 16th, Andrea Medellin experienced a parent's worst nightmare when her four-year-old daughter, Sari, was unconscious and not breathing. They were playing around and all we heard was a bang. The dresser and television in Sari's room fell over and crushed her when she was climbing up the front of the dresser to change the TV channel. Okay, they're here, they're here. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. It was a pain that no mother should go through. Go ahead. The family responded appropriately. They called 911. They brought her out to meet uh, the 
you know, first responders that got there. Yeah, it was frantic, you know. It was really, it, it was hectic. There, there was people yelling, screaming everywhere. Find out where they're going, please. We pulled up. We didn't really know what was going on until we realized she was over here holding the baby in the middle of the road. We knew something serious was going on there. I can tell you, you know, my heart sunk all over again when I saw her because it, it, it didn't look good. Do you have any idea what happened? Did she drink no. something, eat something? Right away, she handed Sari to Officer Vanderbeer and we put her on the hood of a car and I started chest compressions on her until IFD arrived because she wasn't breathing. She had blood coming from her nose. The police officers and the Irving Fire Department were able to resuscitate Sari and rushed her to the hospital. They took care of her like she was their own. She has been in recovery for three and a half months. And after finally getting released from the hospital, the Irving Police Department and Irving Fire Department are welcoming her home <coughs> with a parade. to honor her resilience and being able to fight through her medical health issues, to also honor the Irving and Fire officers that you know got out here quickly, prolonged her life to be able to get her to a medical facility so that the professionals, the nurses and doctors could do their job in helping get her back on a road to recovery. I saved your life, baby. It's also a chance for Sari's family to show their gratitude. I want to thank y'all because if it wasn't for y'all, she wouldn't be here. And I know how fast you guys were driving because I heard your tires screech <laughs> as soon as you stopped and you saw me waving y'all down. But if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have my baby right now. And I want to thank you guys for everything y'all do and for saving her life and allowing her to be with us. Since she's been in the hospital, I never left her side. I was with her most of the time. I only came home for like Mother's Day to see the children and stuff. And getting to meet them, it was, it was beautiful. And it's just as meaningful for the officers to get to see Sari awake and smiling. <laughs> yeah, kind of makes you want to, kind of makes you want to cry a little bit, you know. <laughs> yeah. Made me extremely excited to see her back home. According to the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission, furniture instability injuries and deaths remain a problem. There are furniture straps available, so you can actually strap that furniture to the wall. Um, there's TV straps available, you know, you can mount that on the wall instead of having it on something so that things won't fall on children and they won't be tempted as much to climb up there, you know, and pull on it. It's an important tip to help keep your children safe. Andrea and her family are taking all the necessary precautions to help further Sari's progress. Thank you, say thank you, Daddy. She's got some high spirits, you see some smiles, you see that she's wanting to give some hugs out and, and she's communicating. It's a miracle that even doctors doubted. But now, Sari is home with her family and on the road to recovery. In the midst of all the ugly things that are going on in the world, pay attention to the sweet things like this, the nice things, the, the positive things like this. You know, and there's not just all evilness in this world. Susan Stevens for City Source. The Texas Department of Public Safety is launching a new campaign called Share the Road, Look Twice for Motorcycles. Last year, more than 400 motorcyclists were killed in Texas, and the six-month period from May through October is the most deadly. Safety experts say crashes between motorcyclists and drivers often occur when drivers make left turns in front of an oncoming motorcyclist. Irving Water Utilities is advising customers to be aware of scams happening across the country. Some involve offers of special water filters that provide protection for COVID. The city's message is do not fall for it. The COVID-19 virus has not been detected in drinking water. Regarding payment scams, Irving Water Utilities says you can avoid those by paying bills online at myirvingbill.org or by calling 972-721-721. 3774. Payments are also accepted at Ace Cash Express, Fiesta Mart Grocery Stores, and Western Union. July is Parks and Recreation Month. The Heritage Senior Center found a cool way to celebrate. Take a look. Right over there, you can just stay in your car. Today we're supporting the Heritage Senior Center. I know they provide lunch for seniors in the community and we wanted to just add 
a little bit of an extra touch. You're giving ice cream? Yeah, they're giving oh, ice cream. I'm going to stop and get some ice cream. When we're reaching temperatures of 100 degrees, I think that's probably going to cool them down a little bit. But just offering a nice treat for our seniors. They have five flavors of ice cream. So they have, of course, the basic vanilla, strawberry, chocolate, peach, and then cookies and cream. I got cookies and cream, like the only kind of good ice cream there is. <laughs> Thank you very much. We had four sponsors step forward and come up with the ice cream truck for the unsocial that we're going to have. It's an ice cream social, but it's also unsocial because we're not congregating or doing any of that. With this COVID-19, you can't stop and talk to them, you know. You got to keep them happy for the day, right? <laughs> it's good. It's a good place to come right here, the senior center. Oh, you can eat this on the drive home. How about that? Right now. <laughs> All right, here you go. You got to stay cool, okay? I just wanted to add a little extra care and, and love to those people that have possibly lost some of their, their care network. <laughs> well, if seniors uh, need information, we're also here to answer the phone to give referrals or try to help them with any resources. So uh, they can give us a call. We'll try to get them in the right direction and then come get a meal. And it's every day, Monday through Friday, starting at 10.30 until noon, and it's first come, first serve. Now it's time for our Pets of the Week, so let's get a virtual visit to the Irving Animal Care Campus. Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Pets of the Week. I'm Brett Wheeler, joined via Zoom by Michael Whiteside. And Michael, we have three great pups to feature today. That's correct. We have some uh, new dogs that we're going to feature today. Um, the first one that we have is Gracie. She's about three years old. She is a retriever shepherd mix. And um, she was actually surrendered because she, the owners were moving and they couldn't take her to the new place that they were going. So she's a little nervous. She's only been with us a couple weeks now. So she's still a little nervous, but she is so sweet. I do know that she lived with a cat when she was in a home. So she's been around other animals. She's very mellow, very laid back, and she loves getting attention. Her favorite is getting scratched at the base of her tail, which I think is a kind of the favorite of a lot of dogs, but Gracie really, really loves that. And she's just so, so sweet. All right, Michael, next up we have Donald. Tell me about Donald. Yeah, so Donald is another um, fairly new pet to us. He's been here a couple weeks, but he is super handsome. We have him listed as a Spanish water dog mix. He's about two years old. He actually came in as a stray. I remember I actually saw him the day that somebody was bringing him in. He had a collar on, so I know he's been in a home, but he wasn't reclaimed. So now he's just waiting to go home with you know a great family. He is very playful when you first get him out of his kennel and he comes out and he kind of jumps around and likes to have a good time, but then he calms down pretty quickly and looks for the closest person that he can go to and kind of hang out with them and, and sit right by their side. And who would be a good fit for Donald? He seems like he is a people dog. He definitely, I mean, he really seems to enjoy people. He doesn't in the yards when I've been around him, he doesn't seem reactive to other pets um, in other play yards. So he is pretty low key. I think he's really gonna enjoy any sort of family. He's still young at two years old. I think he's gonna do great in a family setting. He'll probably love to go for walks. He'll love to play in the yard and he'll love to just kind of hang out with his people wherever he can find them. All right, Michael, up next, we have a dog so nice you had to name it twice, Bam Bam. Tell me about Bam Bam. That is correct. Bam Bam is a three-year-old blue healer mix. He was another pet that was surrendered due to landlord issues. Sounded like they were maybe moving or something, but he did live with another dog and he lived with younger children. So we know that he would do well with both. He is a cute little guy. He's got a really stocky build. He's very playful, very friendly. When he was surrendered, the previous owners did say that he loves car rides, he loves fetch, and he does know some commands. Now, the only quirk that uh, Bam Bam has is that he likes to climb fences. And looking at his record, it did look like he had been here quite a few times as a stray because he kept trying to climb the fence. So, you know, whoever takes him home is really going to have to be aware of the fact that 
if he's left alone, he's gonna, he might try to get out of the fence to go try and find a job to do because that's what blue healers like. Now he is on hold. He's about to, he's about to start heartworm treatment this week because he did test positive for heartworms. So he's not really gonna be ready to go home for about a month, but he is still available to come meet and kind of see how cute and adorable he really is. All right, Michael, now everyone knows summer is just cooler with cats and that's exactly the program that you guys have going on right now. That's correct. Till the end of the month, July 31st, all of our cats that are one year and older are free to adopt. Kittens are only going to be $50 to adopt. And so we're still kind of in the middle of what's considered kitten season, kind of lasts through the whole summer. So we still have a lot of cats and a lot of kittens coming into the shelter and just waiting to go home with you. It's a great time to take advantage of that special because you still get all the benefits of adoption with the vaccinations and spay neuter and microchip, you just get the lower or free cost. And of course, this is a busy time for you guys. There are a lot of animals in the animal shelter right now that are just waiting for that forever home. And then another event that's coming up is Clear the Shelters. And I think it's gonna look a little bit different this year. So could you tell us what it's gonna look like? Yeah, we are planning right now for Clear the Shelters, which will be coming up in August. Typically it's a single day event. Um, this year, obviously there's gonna be some changes and we're working out how we're gonna actually make that happen, but we're still getting ready to start promoting Clear the Shelters. You're gonna see a lot of news stories um, on NBC and Telemundo stations about Clear the Shelters. And so we're really looking forward to see how, we're, how it's gonna work out this year and really work to really get all these animals out of the shelter once again through Clear the Shelters. And it's an amazing event, so please make sure to check out for that. Back to you, Kathy. The best way to adopt right now is to call the Animal Care Campus and make arrangements to meet. DFW Humane Society's number is 972-721-7788. For Irving Animal Services, call 972-721-2256. Also, check out the websites on your screen. Before we wrap up this edition of City Source, we pause to say a word on the passing of civic leader John Boyle. John Boyle was instrumental in the growth of Irving with involvement in many charitable organizations, school district initiatives, and city issues. He will be remembered by his friends in Junto and the Coffee Shop Council for his thoughtful legal opinions and distinctive laughter. He passed away July 20th. Our condolences to his family and many friends. We will continue to follow the response to COVID-19 next time on City Source. Also, we have brought you several stories on Shop Talk, the police department's unique program in barber shops and salons. Next time, hear from the leader of a nonprofit organization who is working to expand the program nationally. That's on the next edition of City Source. Remember, you can always email us your thoughts on our stories. The address is ICTN at cityofirving.org and find us on YouTube. Our channel is at youtube.com slash the city of Irving. Subscribe and you can get notifications when we upload new videos. That's it for this edition of City Source. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy and we'll see you next time.